Curry, Curry's just, I don't think he's as good as he was in that 15, 16 stretch. I, you know, that was probably the peak of his powers, but he's pretty close and he really knows this team. And I got to say, we've talked about this before, but I, the Durant, the three years with Durant, it's such a bummer that Curry just didn't have his own team the whole time because this would be amazing if they made the finals with this team that they have. They don't have another all NBA player, you know, and people would say, well, Draymond, it's like, well, not, not really. I, I don't think he's a top 15 player. He might be like top 25, top 30, but I mean, I, you know, and Clay is in the state he's in. Poole has been kind of marginalized this series because Dallas has been hunting them. So Golden State's been very careful about playing him. But I, I was thinking about like, this would be Curry's six finals, right? He's one away now. Six finals is a real achievement. You're talking LeBron made 10, Kareem made 10, Russell made 12, uh, Kobe made seven, West made nine, Havlicek made eight, Magic made nine, Duncan made six, Jordan six, Shaq six, Wilt six, Kuzi seven, Elgin seven. Even Bird didn't make six finals. Even Dr. J didn't make six finals. You know, it's it's a short list of like, were you an awesome player? Did you make the finals? How many times did you make it? So six, especially with the fact that he's got this young core and if they, you know, if, if they strike oil with Kamingo, like you and I think they might have, down the road, like him two years from now, if that becomes like a pass the torch possible guy, he might, LeBron made 10 finals, Curry, the 10 finals might not be out of question because they'll also spend the money too. And if they play this Wiggins Wiseman thing, if that's the trade and bring one more star in, who knows? All right. I love this because I agree with you that the most absurd version of Steph may be gone. All right. But we definitely take him for granted. You know, he'll have 30 and then maybe he doesn't have the best fourth quarter and you're like, oh, and then he still has, but then he'll, he'll have like the next game, he'll have two of like the biggest like stake in the heart threes against yes. you. And like those feel like they're worth more than three points because you're like, he did it at the end everything. of the first half today. Just, oh, it's like one of those. And he had about the one in the corner. We turned and looked at his bench as it was going through. Uh, those mean more than three points to me. I, I really believe that. And, you know, you look at the Memphis series, you're like, all right, you know, he's 42 and 33%. Like, what's going on? And then it's kind of, I was reading a preview this today. It was like, you know, he still hasn't really found his rhythm. He's now 49 and 48% from overall in three. He's on 10 attempts. He's at 48%. (laughs) And people are kind of like, yeah, I don't know. The biggest thing with him is that however he changed his body type, and I think it was him knowing what it was going to be like with Clay being out in last season. Like last season was set up for is Steph going to like a referendum on Steph and who he really is. And then maybe he's behind the top guys. And granted, it's not like that team, you know, they didn't even get out of the plane. So let's not get too crazy. But that team was bad. I thought he bulked up. I think his driving is the best it's ever been. Me too. Uh, It's it certainly looks (laughs) against Dallas. (laughs) I mean, I don't want to use embarrassing because that's almost insulting, but it's I mean, I'll just say it's pathetic how easy it is to get the rim against this team. It's it's a joke. Like as soon as Golden State feels like there's anything coming, like, hey, you guys just want to get to the rim. And then they'd hunt Luca a little bit. And then they were doubling like crazy. And it was a little like like Brooklyn, actually. Remember Boston just getting to the rim anytime they wanted against Brooklyn when they'd have those small guards out there? Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. When Boston was good in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) We're going to talk about that (laughs) later. Yeah. Curry. (laughs) Just. Just one of a kind, man. I, you know, and he needs this from, we always talk, I, I'm probably partly responsible for this, the, the legacy conversation, which seems to, everybody seems to have to have all the time now. Um, something that we love to do on this thing, but it's a little different when you add that 22 finals, when you have the five in a row and Durant shows up for the last three. And if that had just been it, it would have been its own little era and it would have been special. But then to get back, like have a check, 74 and 76 brings the Celtics two more finals. Like near, near, a little past this prime, probably even a little more past this prime than Curry is this year. I, th- I, feel, I still feel like Curry's in the tail end of his prime, but Havlicek gets these two extra titles after Russell. And it just changes how you would think of him historically. Like, I think he's one of the 15, he has to be on the list of the best 15 ever because of his durability and all the things. But those last two really helped him. And I think with Curry, 
even making the finals this year, that's such like a, a coup for him when you look at this Warriors team, which is a really strange team. You know, and I think the West was was not what it used to be. I don't think there's any question. Well, it definitely um, isn't. You know, and I like I'll just jump in because I did this on my pod. And I know maybe you know I've just texted about it, but I had to kind of and maybe way too late in the game when I was evaluating the top teams. And now this is without Phoenix too, because we looked at Phoenix with this profile of like, hey, you know, you realize like it's Phoenix and then it's everybody else because of all these different things that they've been doing. That didn't work out. But we had been spoiled with 10 plus years of teams where you're like, who's beating those guys? All right. Yeah. And then they it was either the LeBron crew or Golden State. And then it was LeBron going up against that crew and then getting one against them and then Durant coming into it. And then the Toronto thing's a little weird because of the clay and then Durant injuries. And then, you know, maybe we didn't look at the bubble the Lakers, the bubble. And then yeah, that was Milwaukee. Weird. Milwaukee was new, but had Milwaukee gotten out of the East, which very well could have happened if they figure out a way to win game seven, you know, maybe Milwaukee would be in that conversation. But I know like Miami's a classic example of this. Like, am I comparing Miami to the rest of the East or am I comparing Miami to 10 years of thinking there's a scary team? And if the scary team doesn't exist, it means you have to almost be, you have to just change your perception of what a team's ceiling is when there isn't this, how the hell are we going to beat those guys out there? I'm going to add to what you just said. I think the scary team era is over. I think there's too much talent now. Part of the reason we had this imbalance in these scary teams was we just didn't have the same kind of talent. Like the 2017 Celtics made the conference finals with like Kelly Olynyk and Amir Johnson playing minutes. Avery Bradley, I think. Was, Avery, was Avery Bradley and all kinds of shit. Um, we just, there just wasn't enough talent to go around. There was some bad luck with injuries and stuff like that. I think the league's loaded now. And even you think about these playoffs where, you know, these teams feel like they're all pretty close to one another, but then you also had Denver who had had a ton of injuries. Uh, you had Memphis who loses jaw during the Warriors series. Who knows if it's different if that doesn't happen. You have the Clippers, they're not even in it. Um, I was saying, I was talking to a Laker fan about this. I was just like, I, you know, whatever you do with Westbrook, it's not going to matter. You guys don't have one of the, you guys will never be one of the 10 best teams next year. You might be, you might be able to win a series. You might be able to be scary for seven games, but there's, there's too much talent now. You can't just be like, here's LeBron in year 20 and here's Davis and here's a bunch of, of role guys and we're ready to go toe to toe with some of these teams that we're seeing now. Golden State's going to be better next year, you know? And I don't know what's going to happen with Phoenix, but we know Denver's going to be better. We know Memphis will be better. You go on down the line, it's like the, the league's just going to be better. Boston's going to be either the same or better. Um, who knows with Brooklyn? But I think there's probably nine or 10 teams that have a chance to make the finals next year. We'd never say that. When was the last time? It's usually like three, four, three, five, maybe. maybe. Yeah, right, right. Uh, well, we went through a decade of feeling like it was too. Like I remember one year, Honestly, I picked Golden State Toronto before the season started that year just because, and I'm not doing this retroactively to give myself credit. I did it because I was like, I just don't feel like picking Cleveland again. Yeah. I was like, I just want to, I just want to pick somebody else. Um, Look, LeBron's eight, eight in a row is an incredible feat and speaks to what a durable player he was and what a smart player he was to get out of the Miami situation in time and start a new situation right as that was falling. But the conference was pretty weak. And a lot of the threats that were popping up when you look back and you think like a team like Brooklyn with with uh, Williams and Joe Johnson and old KG and all Pierce, like, like we were thinking that team had a chance to win the East. And you put that team in 2022 and they're like a seventh seed, you know? So I just think, I, I just think it's different now. 